the menu. So this was uh, starring Ray Fine, Nicholas Holt, Anya Taylor Joy. Right, I got that. Mm-hmm. I almost said Taylor Johnson, like that other guy, the Flash yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Quicksilver. Um, I sound like I'm bringing some real boomer energy to names. Um, yeah, so it's a it's like a horror comedy about this like r- rich group of people who show up for like the finest menu in, in on this you know resort island. Um, you know, like really pretentious, like everything is to the nines. And then, you know, the horror starts to ensue. And before you out there, if you haven't seen it before you assume that it's like cannibalism, it's not cannibalism. I'll just. Yeah, I mean, definitely when I I just turned, I didn't know anything about it, but when I turned it on, I was like, is this about cannibalism? Like you, <laughs> you, you think that as soon as it starts, but yeah. it's a little more clever than that. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think I think they knew <clears throat> that it can't be it, cannibalism. Is uh, this the one that um, Amy, uh, Amy was talking about in the uh, Discord? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, you didn't for, get to see it. No, no, I saw it, but I I read that beforehand, yes. and then I watched it, and it was kind of like this doesn't. It didn't. It's it's not really graphic at all, is it? It's kind of there's, there's there's ideas in it, but it's not. Right at the end of the day, that you don't actually experience all that much horror. No. Yeah. But there's it's very tense, so it sort of has like almost a thrillerish kind of. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I just found it very, very funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I the, the dark humor is great. I found it more funny than anything. Yeah. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and then over the course of the evening, spoilers. Uh, this famous chef. It's kind of like in the Gordon Ramsay esque, where he has like everyone, all of his sous chefs are like, "Yes, chef. Yes." You know, it's like yes, it's kind chef. of a cult. Yeah. Yes, chef. It's kind of like a cult, and, and he has a cult of personality. And he had a TV show at some point, and over the course of the evening, you realize he's gonna like kill everybody and himself um, yeah. with the with this final because um, it's it's yes. Yeah, it, well, I, I said spoilers <laughs> um, <laughs> with with this meal. You said spoilers, yeah. Frankie. <laughs> yeah, I said spo- so, so spoilers. He kills everybody. Um, Besides, and you know, Taylor Joy or whatever. Yeah, it's re- it's really funny that because when when they're all getting on the boat and she's like, "This is bullshit," I was just like, "She's the one that's going to get off that island." Yeah, she's the hero. Yeah, totally. I I agree. That that tends to yeah. be how it goes. Um, my but, my know. my favorite bit. Of the, sorry, my yeah, my favorite bit of the whole film. Um, it's just, it's you know, like it, it's it's like a little bit in, but it's when he's he's like pointing out why you know, like he's killing like each of them and whatever yeah and there's the one um the, the guy played by uh john leguizamo he's, he's very just like movie. yeah yeah he's great um but it's just like yeah uh you were in a movie that i really didn't like <laughs> it was my one <laughs> sunday off of it. it was so funny yeah or the 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 girl he's like uh yeah it's like oh i, I went to brown's like student loans it's like no you're gonna die tonight <laughs> <laughs> i love good. it yeah it was great I, I i really like the movie i recommend it my um I, the 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 secret weapon is ray fine um as the oh, chef yeah. he's he's a. Uh, I get the impression that that whoever wrote it and it was it was produced by will ferrell and adam mckay so you can understand where the kind of subversive like comedy thing comes from but I get the impression that whoever came up with the idea for it started with like, what if we had a, a Gordon Ramsay horror movie? You you can tell that that was the seed of it. And then somebody developed it into mm-hmm. something much better where it's more about like, um, you know, obviously it's it, the, the movie has this perspective of it just hates rich people <laughs> and it hates fancy people. Yeah. But he, I he think that bring, was the he, he brings, he brings like a sadness to it. He brings like a, like mm-hmm. a certain, like, um, cause he could have just played it sadistic. And instead, it se- it feels like he meticulously planned it and is grief stricken by everything he's doing. Like he's a man that's completely at his own wits end. And I think that's what makes it compelling. Yeah. That's what, why I kept wanting to watch. Yeah, the yeah. strongest part for, for me was that he is an artist and he's trying to make art for an increasingly dissatisfied an audience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. an appreciative audience. As he succeeds. I mean, as a YouTuber, I mean, I'm sure we all <laughs> feel this where you make something and it's always criticized, but it's like, as he succeeds, he gets increasingly, his audience becomes more selective and unsatiated by what he's doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what spoke to me the most. 
It works. I think it works beginning to end. Yeah. I re- I re- I really liked um, you know, so they they kept having like the cards coming up. Where it's oh, like I the text it. over what's happening. <laughs> it's just like... Yeah, the, the 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 text gags were so good. Like yeah. uh when when Tyler makes his own dish and it's like Tyler's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and then it that does all fantastic. the like uh, describes it. Yeah, so it's it, it, the the layers of comedy, the dark comedy. Um, yeah, there was some class stuff that I felt like was was not as developed well, especially when you like think of it. The, the, it's a bunch of privileged people coming together to make the film in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, it feels it, like it, the Oscars when they're lecturing people and they're just right. a bunch of rich people giving each other golden trophies, and so. It's I'm like, like, how, how okay, do you even know what? about some of this caviar stuff in the first place, writers? <laughs> like, I bet you've attended a meal like this before, you fucks. I've never been to a meal like this. I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. It is strange when, like, the rich hate the rich. It makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. It, it does. It does. It's it's a little bit. It's a little bit strange. But you know, you guys should be busy it's... hating me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll what hate you. Amongst yourselves for. <laughs> exactly. Um, but did you like the way it was shot, EJ? Yeah, I thought I thought everything from well, you know, especially just coming from what you know what we've been watching is a lot of the shovelware from Disney Plus. It's just good to see something with just great direction. Yeah, a great intentional, um, intentional shots. It's just everything. So even if like not everything landed with me. It's just so refreshing to see something with a vision, something with um, incredible dialogue. Uh, the acting is just pitch perfect. So it's just you really I, I couldn't ask for anything else for this film. And I felt the same thing with uh, Barbarian is a movie. Um, mm. It's a horror movie kind of similar where you're watching it and you're trying to figure out what kind of movie it actually is going to be. And it, it also has good direction, good acting, and it's it's a similar similar kind of vibe in the way where you're trying to figure out what what it ultimately is going to lead to, and both of them have that where you're just you're just happy it it exists, yeah. In this in this climate, I agree. I I was actually thinking I was like because I I watched it with Nina. And it's kind of rare that like after we put Gloria to bed that we like actually go like, hey, want to watch a movie? And it'll just be two hours. It'll be under two hours. So we can get to <laughs> bed. We can get to bed at a reasonable time. It's not some show or like want to try to watch it. That's how, that's how so many TV shows are. Like want to try to I, watch a show. I try to watch it. It's, it's 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to try to watch this? <laughs> I don't want to try to watch something. I want to just watch it. And then whether I hated it or not, it's over. Um. And I thought, like, remember when we were all disgusted by, like, ugh, movies are just, like, vehicles for celebrities. Well, I, I kind of miss it. I'm kind of like, I remember when the reason you would see a movie is because somebody was in it. You're like, oh, that's like that Ray Fine movie or that's that Anya Taylor-Joy Oh, movie. yeah. Yeah. And that was enough to sell, to make a $300 million movie or something. It could be there's about still, anything. There's still a little bit of that. You know. You, Not much. Um, Not much. It's, it, you, I mean... Obviously, the most successful things like Top Gun Maverick, that's a Tom Cruise movie. And, and a it, franchise it's, movie. Yeah, and a franchise movie. And it's it, he he definitely brings it when he he you watch that movie or you know yeah. Mission Impossible movies. Tom as Cruise long as Tom Cruise isn't making the mummy, he seems to be able to do all right at the box office. Yeah, that, that's it. That is a good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I I, I I, I don't know because I, you know, I mean, the the most recent thing that you'd see, you know, someone like uh, Jim Carrey in, I guess, would be Sonic. But then that's not really a Jim Carrey movie, is it? That's a Sonic movie, and right. Um, yeah. I guess sometimes like you get directors who you know, like have a like reasonable bit of sway. Like um, yeah, Chris, like everyone's talking about the Oppenheimer movie with Christopher Nolan and so or uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it happens, but it's it's rarer, and um, I'd like for it to happen more. How about that? I'd like for like for months on end, the big movies people are talking about are just big movies that have big celebrities <laughs> without <laughs> without without being tied to any, you know, maybe you adapt a novel here and there. Some some novel no one's ever heard of. You adapt that, you know, that's what I'd like to watch. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, I don't know. I, 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 I genuinely think it's the same shit. I think it's, it's like when people talk about, you know, like music was bad in the eighties or it was good in seventies or whatever. It's like, you can look back on a decade and you can pick out the stuff that you like. It's going to be the same. Like you look back in 10 years and there'll be these, that you know, there's enough, there's as much good stuff with a vision as there's always been. There's just more stuff. So I don't know. It's, yeah. Well, the more the more stuff is maybe what I object to because it it the the higher quantity does redirect your focus and your direction and and what you're watching. Yeah, and okay. It, it it also exhausts. It exhausts you, where like you might you might not be as interested in movies, or you might be like I don't know. Yeah. I just watched all of Obi Wan, and like I don't want to watch another. I don't want to stare at the TV anymore. You know. Yeah. yeah. And all of Obi Wan made me think that avatar was a good film so it's like <laughs> <laughs> exactly um well that's that's the menu so i recommend it my one of my favorite parts of the movie that I, that stuck with me was they're talking about like the chef's vision and and they're talking about why they have to kill everybody and she's like hell it all ha- everybody has to die at the end because otherwise it just tastes good and then who cares <laughs> it's like it has to tie together thematically and it just reminded me of like our conversations about writing we're like well it's got to tie together otherwise what is it it's just jerking off you know <laughs> it's, i like to just I, think I, at the beginning where he came out and he was like don't eat taste and then later yeah. on he's saying to her eat your food eat. Like, like you said don't eat it's like it's not what i'm fucking <laughs> and it made us all yeah. hungry for cheeseburgers that's for sure oh yeah, yeah definitely yeah. <clears throat> that was that, that that was an amazing like get out because <laughs> like watching a game of chess at the end of that film <laughs> <laughs> which she also was the queen's gambit right so yes she, right, she's also gambit. the queen of chess she's good in that she is the queen of chess yeah she's good in everything she's, that, she's that always reptilian. doing a, an american <laughs> accent you know she's always doing an american accent it's slightly <clears throat> lispy you know like she like pronounces s's which kind of goes into her snake like <laughs> <laughs> There's an Anya Teller joy for every occasion. Like Gloria really likes the Playmobil movie for some reason. She's very much in that. Nobody's seen the Playmobil movie except for our family, but she's in it in early in her career. Of course, there's the witch. Of course, there's Northman. So if you if you like your Robert Eggers, you can get her there. And uh, uh, what does Nina like her in? Oh, Emma. She was in an adaptation of, of a Jane Austen movie. And it's actually a pretty good Jane Austen movie. Yeah, and she'll be uh, Princess Peach. Uh, Johnny Flynn. Yes. As, uh, yeah, the guy. My queen be. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Uh, so I recommend it. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.